Nicole from the Cath Lab. I'm the educator and uh, assistant director here at UMC. We're going to go over how to take the TR band off per policy and procedure of UMC. First of all, we're going to give you and report how many cc's were left or mils of air were left in the band. So make sure that you got that. If you did not get that, make sure you ask that question. Also, we're going to tell you if it was a diagnostic procedure or a intervention procedure because those are different. We're going to follow the policy which, which recommends for diagnostic procedures, we will begin removing air an hour post procedure. Post procedure means when the patient returns to you or two hours for intervention post procedure. Again, when they return to you. So uh, two things that are very important is making sure that we have the correct syringe. This syringe is special for this band. If you do not have this syringe, you need to call us because you will not be able to just use any syringe. It has to be this TR band syringe that goes with the band. Next, assessment. When we get the patient back to you on the floor, you're going to assess the site just like normal. Uh, that means make sure that this is not actively bleeding. We're also going to be looking, there will be blood in here. That's normal because we do it with bleed back. So we watch for blood to come back and then we add some more air. The next thing we're going to look for is that our circulation looks good. We have good blanching and we can put a pulse ox to watch the, the waveform is good. Uh, they can wiggle their fingers. Most of the time we will not just wrap it up because we want to assess behind and in front of the band and we want to make sure there's no swelling back here. That's something that we're going to watch for. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to be careful that we don't, when we apply this, if we have air in the band, we're going to be really careful that we don't just let all the air out. We have to make sure that when we attach the syringe, we've got back pressure on the band. Then when we start taking air out, we're going to take two to three cc's of air out at a time only. And then we're going to wait 15 minutes and we're going to assess the site. If it was to start bleeding back at you as soon as you take the two cc's of air out, we're going to reapply the two cc's that we just took out and we're going to let it go for another 15 to 20 minutes. If there's swelling that develops back here, that would be a hematoma where it's most commonly caused from overinflation of the balloon. That means there's too much air in there and we're going to take out one cc of air from the band. We're going to mash the hematoma out and we're going to watch it. If it regrows, we're going to put, take one more cc of air out of the band. We're going to mash the hematoma out and we're going to watch it. If it does not regrow, then we're going to leave it alone for the next 15 minutes. And then we'll start the process of, after that 15 minutes of removing the two to three mils of air. Once this band is ready to come off, it is recommended by the rep to let the patient get up and around, let them go eat, let them run, run to the bathroom. That way the band is still in place. All the air may be out, but it's still in place. So if they start re-bleeding, you can add two to three mils of air back into it and you won't have to hold pressure and call the doctor and because they've re-bled. So these are the recommendations from us. So if you have any questions or concerns, please call the cath lab and we will, we will help and direct you. Thank you.